Hi guys, this is a simple introductory tutorial on how to configure and use Ampilab IDE. Ampilab IDE is a software program that runs on a PC to develop applications for microchip microcontrollers. It is called an Integrated Development Environment IDE because it provides a single integrated environment to develop code for embedded microcontrollers, meaning to say it has editor for you to type in your code. It has a compiler which helps to compile your code. And finally, it has the debugging mode which can help you to debug your mode, uh, sorry, to debug your code and see the output results. So first thing what we're going to do is we're going to create a new folder in your D drive or whichever drive. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder under my D drive. Now why we are doing this is because if you choose to create a folder under my documents what will happen is the path file or the path to the file will be too long and if the path file is too long when you compile in MPLAB you will receive an error. So that's why I am advising all of you to create a new folder under D drive so that the path file will be short. So first thing we're going to create a new folder and this new folder let us name it MPLAB. So we have here MPLAB. Double click this. This folder is empty. So we're going to create another new folder inside the MPLAB and we shall name it trial one. Now try to have this practice of archiving your works properly. Try to create folder for each work that you do so all the files don't get messed up. So after you're done creating your new folder, now you can close your Windows Explorer. Next, let us start using the MPLAB IDE. So I assume all of you have already installed MPLAB IDE in your PCs or laptop. So double click on the icon and you have this. So here you can see there are two windows. Just close these two windows and you have a fresh new window. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to configure the MPLAB IDE. So in order to do that, let us go under configure tab. So when you click on configure tab, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to select device. So under this new window, under device tab here, if you click the drop down menu, we have a lot of PIC 18 series. Now because Uni10, we are using PIC 18 458. So I'm going to select this 458. I'm going to click OK. Next, again, we are going, our configuration is still not done yet. We're going to go under configure tab again. Now, select configuration bit. Now, we have this new window. Under configuration bits set in code, please uncheck this configuration bit set in code. You will receive warning just click OK now the first setting that we're going to do is under the category tab if you see the first setting that we're going to do is oscillation oscillator selection bits now you see under the settings here if we click down drop down we are going to select HS oscillator now this is because our microcontroller is using 20 megahertz frequency oscillator so for 20 megahertz frequency oscillator, we need to use HS setting. Let's click that. Next, we are going to under category, look under category, you see, can see this watchdog timer enable bit. Watchdog timer enable bit. So you can see under setting it is enabled. We are going to disable that. Click down disable this. Why we are disabling this? I'll be telling all of you in class. Then the third 
configuration that we're going to do is under category you see low voltage icsp enable bit icsp means in circuit serial programming enable bit so what we're going to do is we're going to disable this that is because pic 18 uses high voltage icsp so again this three configuration we need to uh, do the proper settings for it so what are the, those three oscillation oscillator selection bits watchdog timer enable bit you need to disable that low voltage icsp enable bit you need to disable that after you're done with the configuration you can close this window <clears throat> now after you're done with the configuration now we can begin to type our new assembly language code in order to do that there's an icon here for new file or optionally you can also uh, check under the file tab and you can click new so I'm going to choose the icon new file so you have a new uh, window enlarge this maximize this you can see it's fully white in white I think here this is your editor now there is a program template which I'll be uploading in Moodle so what you need to do is just need to copy all of this and paste it here so I'm going to arrange this so it look nice some tab So this is basically how your program structure looks like. You have this include this include this library. I'll be telling you about this in the class. And you have your program start template. This is all compulsory. This line and all this line. They are compulsory in assembly language program. And you have you can see the start label and this end label. So all these things must be there in an assembly language code so where do you write your program it's somewhere here write your program you can write any of any program here then you can execute compile and execute your program now um, let us take one program for example uh, in our tutorial 2 let us take the first question we have this first question write an instruction sequence to swap the contents of data registers at hex 300 and hex 200 we have discussed this in class and we came up with this solution here so what are you going to do this instruction by itself cannot do anything we need to compile it and you need to use appropriate libraries so that you can use them so let us copy this solution and minimize this so I'll paste it here. So let me just arrange it properly. So this is your coding and all these labels and program start template and libraries are needed for you to compile this code. You cannot compile the code just by itself. <coughs> so after doing this, uh, we need to save the file so when you save the file you can click the icon save then uh, please make sure that you have selected the folder which you have created and just now I have created one folder I named it file 1 so double click and under the file name you just can type example 1 and now the extension for this file is .asm because this is the extension for assembly language take note that it is very very important for you to write this extension otherwise you will have problem so then now you can save so if you notice that now the color changes that is because the extension is .asm if the color doesn't change or there is no color function here that means you forgot to include that .asm function now since we are done with our editor, we have actually uh, typed our code, uh, we can proceed to compile. 
but before we can compile we need to have a project file for us to compile and you need to attach this asm file the source code to your project file so that you can compile it so how to do that we shall go to this project tab we'll click project and we have this project wizard so click on project wizard and you have the welcome note you just click next the device selected if you if you see here the device selected is pis 18458 this is because earlier you have already selected the device if you have not done so you can still amend the device here then you click next So under next, you can see the active tool suite should be microchip MPASM tool suite. Usually by default, this will be selected. If it is not selected, make sure you select the right active tool suite. And under the tool suite contents, you should have these three components. MPASM assembler, MPLink object linker, MPLib, MPLib librarian. So all these three contents are required for us to actually compile uh, the code. So each time when you click on the toolset content, you should see that there should be some link. There should be some link and the third one, there should be some link. If it is empty, you will have problem in compiling the code. So next, let us go to the next one. Now under create new project, You can uh, go back under the same uh, folder trial one you can also name your project as exe1 let's click save now you can see the path it is under d drive under folder mplab and under the folder trial the name of the project is exe1 or example one if we have chosen to save this work in my documents you will see that the path will be very long now we can click next now step 4 is add existing files to your project now under the folder mplab and uh, under that we have trial 1 and inside this trial 1 we have already created our files which is which we have named it exe1.asm just click this and you click add so you have add added your files to your project so this is the name of the file which you added to your project so after you have done with that you can click next so you can see this is finished this is a summary the device that you have selected the tool set that you are using the path the path of the file and you can see for project you have the extension dot mcp this is the extension for project now you're done you can click finish when you're finished you can see a new window pops up exe1 dot mcw mcw means this is the workspace so under this workspace there is this project exe1 dot mcp and you can see a lot of folders here under the source file folder you have already added one uh, exe1.asm file so double click on this and you can have back your earlier code which you have typed so you can enlarge this <coughs> so we are done uh, with adding the file to the project the next thing that we need to do is we need to compile the project so in order to do that again we go under project tab and here you have this option build org control f10 alternatively you might want to learn this shortcut control f10 so that you don't have to refer or to go under this tab all the time you can use the shortcut control f10 so you click build all so you will have uh, this node this question absolute or relocatable choose by default relocatable will be selected so just click relocatable and here while waiting for it to compile it's actually compiling 
So as you can see, there is no error loaded. So build succeeded. So that means there is no error, and we have compiled our code successfully. So we can close this window. So now we have compiled successfully. Now if you go back to your folder which you have created earlier. Now you can see there are so many other files. The original files that you have created is this one .asm and also of course the project file. The rest .cof dot err dot hex dot lst and dot o are all output files when you have compiled successfully all these output files will be generated now this hex file is actually contains the machine code which you need to download to a microcontroller so later if you're dealing with the real hardware you need to download this file so we are done with this now we have already compiled successfully now how to uh, check whether this coding is uh, executing properly or not is we need to go uh, we need to use the debugger function so for that 